Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on the ruler tool in Photoshop. Ruler tool, great for measuring distances and lots of other things as well. And I'm just going to run through some of these things. Key panels for this, window, info, layers and measurement log. There probably some other things if you want as well. However, here's the ruler tool. And the ruler tool itself is over here. If you can't find it, just go down here to the extras and it should be there. And you can edit the toolbar and move it in and use it. So select the ruler tool and you can see what you've got. You've got this start point and end point. Unfortunately, the start point and end point look exactly identical to my eyes. Doesn't indicate particularly, but you can move it as well. So you can select it here, you can drag, and also you can click there and resize it. So you can just resize that if you want to do that. Also, you can clear it as well. So you can do a few things and also you can go over here and start there. Now, unfortunately, because you don't, it doesn't start from the start. This is the start, because you can see over here, X is 209, Y is 158. Now, I want that to be the other way around. So now I'll put that up top. If I put that up top, you can see it's zero, zero. If you go off the edge, it vanishes. So it's simple as that. But you've got here, it's, and you can hold the shift down. So it's 45 degrees, you can see 45 degrees there. Now what you can see here, you've got width 181. Well, you can see, yes, it's about 181, I would suggest. And also height. 181. Um, yep, yeah, I would say it's about 181. Well, you can see the information also here, width 181, 181, angle 45, and also the length 255. So you've got the information here as well as up here as well. So also you've got measurement log. Now what does the measurement log do? Well, that stores the thing if you want to. Now I've got here record measurements. That's the only way it does it. You have to click the record measurement. So click and you see ruler seven. So it just it's a count, it's a label. And it's number six of that, untitled document, all those sort of details. And you've got here, and it says 255.97. And that's exactly the figure up there, 255.97 at 45. Obviously that is that. And what you can do, you've got the right side menu, and you've got set measurement scale. You can set it to default, which is one to one, or you can set it one to 50, depends what you want to do. Set data points. And that's what's stored so you can custom and you can customize this so for this you've got the ruler tool count length and angle all these other ones are above here all the various there so you can all this data what you can do right side menu and you can again record the measurements exactly same as this button here also you can select them all so select all and then you can go here export selected so you can export it to a text file so that's quite useful if you want to look at data later so you do lots and lots of measurements and then you can go, unfortunately, it doesn't store the start point, which to me is slightly odd. I'm not certain why they didn't add the start point. That would make sense. However, now what you can do, let's just go, I'm going to move that now. I don't want that, but I wanted to show you, you can record it. And also info, move that out of the way. And you can simply say you want to go from here to here, and it will then tell you the distance is a 310 pixels, dot 28. And then the angle between is 10.6. Use measurement scale. I've just shown you the measurement scale. That can be 1 to 1, 1 to 50, whatever. And now, so you can go hold shift. So from there and go down there. And you can always move that. Got the information there. And it's 90 degrees because I hold, held the shift down. So you've got angle 90 degrees and you've got distance 166. So it just tells you the distance between things which is super useful in many circumstances. Now, what you can also do, you notice I've got layers over here. Now, this works in a slightly odd way, and I must admit, slightly baffles me, and maybe you might put a comment in terms of, I'm not using it right. But to me, so I'm just gonna, I'm using type layer. So the type layer, and I'm just gonna quickly add, and I'm just gonna do it this. All right, let's just do it first, straight line. Straight line across, and what you can do, straighten the layer. And that's the key thing. It's not it's just straighten the layer. Light straightens the active layer, active layer, and you can straighten it. So obviously no movement for the type. Now if I just do it slightly, thing, it does it the reverse. But I guess that's the way the logic for it. But it's slightly odd when you're doing it on a document like this. So straight straighten layer. So you assume that the document. So it's. You've got to do it the opposite way around to thinking, even though you think it was going to move up that way. No, it doesn't. It moves the other way. 
So, but there is, I guess, a logic for the straightening. So, so straighten, tighten, you can see it just shifts down the angle, but it doesn't go up, doesn't match that thing. It'd be nice if it did that feature as well. But anyway, it doesn't. Now, the one thing that's slightly annoying, that it actually removes the ruler once you uh, do that. So if I undo, and I just drag that, so I do that again, straighten layer, and it moves it. I wish it didn't, because the thing is, would make more sense, you might have multiple objects, so now you've got to recreate it every time, which of course you can from the data up here, but that's not the point. It would be nice if it stayed there after you've done it, because then you could go and do it for this one. So you can go to this layer, which is another one, and you could just set that. So let's just again do it approximately the same thing, and it should shift the same way. So I'm just going to quickly go here, straighten layer, and you can see it goes the same angle, it straightens it. I think it's just doing it the other way to not to the actual map to that. However, let's go to the next one, which is background layer. Now, of course, at the moment it's locked. You can see it's locked here. So let's just actually, I'm just going to flatten all those now. So I flatten all those. It's locked, but what you can do, you can unlock it. Just simply click, just click that little lock. It doesn't have to be locked forever. And what you can do, again, you can add this. And so you've got, say, you suddenly think this line is slightly out. It isn't, obviously, but I'm just, but say it is. So you can just position it to where you want it. So you can do that, put that line, and now straighten layer. It does it, say, that way. So it goes However, it does make sense, I guess. But so it's a useful feature. There is a little, so it's tucked away in that. So you can put it that way, straighten layer, and it will do it that way. So if you want it to go the other way, simply that way, straighten layer, it goes that way. Obviously from that angle there. So that's a run through, and I, there's image analysis, some other features in terms of ruler tool. That's about the only th other thing I can think of, the ruler tool. Maybe someone might put in the comments if there's some other features of the ruler tool that I'm not aware of. Maybe it can control other things. Maybe brushes can be, what's that? It'd be really nice. That's one thing that in, there's a couple of applications that, uh, well, one I can think of offhand, that you've got rulers and you can control how the brushes, etc., and other things, I guess, but brushes, follow that ruler and that would be brilliant if you could do that in here and maybe if after after i've done it find it does that'd be really weird however hope you found this tutorial of interest always adding new tutorials all the time about photoshop illustrator and many many other applications as well also any comments like i say please please put some comments about this maybe like i say there's some other uses for the uh, ruler tool always great to hear sort of things that you can do with it and also a dislike or like Always appreciated either way. Thank you much.